with only seven minutes, I'll jump relatively quickly, but hopefully not too quickly through the things that I wanna talk about. Uh, I'm gonna talk a bit about agent-based modeling of migration and adaptation, and a little bit about the model that our group works specifically with. Uh, agent-based models, for those who may not be familiar, are tools where we allow individual decision-making agents to interact with each other and their environment, uh, from which emerge sort of system level properties like migration flows or sediment flows in rivers in agricultural areas or residents being elected or traffic jams forming. Our model is the, the MIDAS model, migration, intensification and diversification as adaptive strategies. And in the model, uh, we have individual agents living in places embedded in social networks and deriving utility from different sources where they are, whether those are jobs or assets or access to natural spaces. They share information and resources across their networks and periodically make decisions about what's the best set of things for me. And if that set of things is somewhere else, then they move. We've done a few applications with this model. We had a nice application a couple of years ago looking at uh, what might be the, the, uh, the forcing effect of sea level rise on coastwise migration in Bangladesh. And one of the things that we found with the data that we had was that under all the scenarios of sea level rise that we considered through RCP 8.5, although we did see impacts on coastwise migration, we saw that you know, our ideas about the availability of coastal amenities and coastal opportunities meant that people were still moving towards the coast. And this wasn't us saying, that's what's gonna happen. It's us saying, here's a plausible narrative where this forcing factor doesn't lead to an exodus from the coast. So let's be more critical when we think about the kinds of data and, and ways to think into the future. Now, one of the challenges we had with that work was, you know, we had a nice little paper that was two pages with 85 pages of documentation that no one would ever read. And we got stuck with this challenge of not easily being able to communicate what was in our model. So typically, and this is true for all models, but it's particularly true for agent-based models with all the different points of articulation that it's not easy to communicate what's in there to those who didn't build it with you. And it really kind of then put for us as a group a focus on how can we improve model communication through the development process and doing a better job of sort of knowledge co-production in sort of a policy lab setting. So trying to figure out how to engage people who wouldn't be building it with us, but who could be a part of the design thinking. And so what we've come to is an approach where we get together with uh, people, professionals, stakeholders, experts uh, in an area of interest a few times to define key questions, identify key processes, and figure out what's the right conceptual model, where our group can then step back, operationalize that in a computational tool, come back to the bigger group and say, all right, with this thing that we mutually understand, what are the right questions to ask? What are the, or what are the experiments to develop? step back, run the experiments, and then come back together as a bigger group to say, this is what we found. What does it mean, given our shared understanding of what we've put into this, this, uh, this model? And this is a, a nice sort of protection of important disciplinary work alongside the equally important interdisciplinary interfaces. And this isn't something we <clears throat> randomly came up with. This is sort of an application of uh, Catherine Grace's uh, framework for working in interdisciplinary teams. And I'll show you just a quick example of uh, work we're doing now looking at mobility in Senegal, where um, we're trying to address questions of the kinds of interventions that help shape, you know, how the impacts of weather and climate can be best moderated in rural spaces, while at the same time, you know, examining what does that do to shift whether people stay there in the long term. So we, we have conducted you know, the first workshop, the first get together and come up with this conceptual model that we worked very hard to make it look like an animal. Uh, and so what that allowed us to do is sort of isolate in the back there sort of a, a, a locus of processes shaping rural mobility decision-making, as well as a, a related locus of processes shaping urban mobility decision-making. And where we've kind of landed uh, as experimental questions, if you look at the tail and the back leg, um, are, you know, what are the impacts of investments in rural opportunities to both sort of shape rural conditions in the short term, but then shift aspirations uh, in communities for the future. And so what this requires us to do is do a better job of integrating this capabilities and aspirations framework. I just tried to describe very briefly what we do in Midas of comparing different portfolios of opportunity. And what I'm working with my postdoc Nick Shkelevi on uh, is to do a better job of putting things we can do now 
on a common computational footing with things we might be able to do in the future. And that's a little bit of a computational challenge, but we've got an algorithm we're developing now and, and testing. And so that's kind of our next phase. And so we have a simple model up and running. Yeah, we, we're using uh, the data that we can find. So we have data on wages from the recent LSMS wave. We have data on movements from the 2013 census, and we have data on mort mortality and fertility from uh, the WHO. But we're missing so many things. And I have a much longer talk where I moan about all the things that I want and can't have. Um, but maybe here, just very quickly, I'll turn to a recent tweet by a well-respected agent-based modeler named Paul Smaldino, who's kind of said, look, people are out there trying to calibrate models, and it's a waste of your time because it's not going to work. And he's much more technical about it in, in what he writes. But the sort of like the basic idea is it's not going to work. Now, for me, this is a bit dramatic. I don't want to. I don't want to say it's not worth it, but it it it's not incorrect. I think there are a lot of things that we can't do with this kind of modeling approach. We shouldn't be thinking about making predictions. But what we can be doing is using tools like this to help us walk through the consequences of the assumptions that we have. And in that, uh, you know, th there's always opportunity to make use of available data and make use of available theory to constrain what we see, uh, and then think carefully about what the outputs mean. So for us as a lab now, that's put us in a position to sort of build out into two different directions of things to be doing. So on the one hand, I think we're very interested in sort of what I'll call here Midas applied. So developing specific uh, model applications for specific places with specific data sets, trying to inform under our understanding with available data of you know applied problems. But at the same time, our modeling tools allow us to generate synthetic worlds with synthetic conditions and ask more abstract questions. You know, what, what happens when people have access to this, but not that? Or what happens when there are, you know, local economic hubs that people can travel to uh, versus wherever they can't? So there's a lot of opportunities to explore these, explore these more sort of like abstract uh, hypothetical questions using toy models. And so I guess our hope in coming here is to talk a little bit about this. And for any in the room, or if you know people who are interested of, you know, building something like this into their work, uh, you know, maybe as a chapter, maybe as something that helps put in context a thing you've looked at elsewhere. Um, I think we'd be really excited to try and be involved in that. So I think I'll stop there. Please be in touch if this is helpful. And uh, that's it for me.